Hi, friend. So good to see you. Happy Wednesday. Sending a big cheers to you wherever you are in the world. I feel like it's been quickly approaching 2024. It, it, I feel like it's, it used to be a dot on the horizon and now it's getting closer and closer and closer because if you can believe it or not, we are slam bam into November. One weekend, we're in, we're done. We're on to the second week. So I know that I've really been looking forward to wrapping up 2023 in a strong way, starting 2024 in an even stronger way and doing it filled with new knowledge, new tips, new tricks, new tactics. And I have a sneaky suspicion that you might be very similar to me and to Shelby and Sam and Matt and Giacomo and Celine and Sahir and Jim and just everyone who's kind of popping in today. If it's your first time here, welcome. We are a friendly bunch here. So if you haven't already said hi in the chat, please do so we can say hi back to you and know that you're here and you're adding wisdom to the table with us today. On this theme of starting 2024 strong and ending 2023 in a really productive way, the common thread that I keep coming back to or rather that I keep talking to other executives and people in business about is really centering communication at the core of everything that you're doing. So whether you are communicating to your boss that you want that promotion by the end of the year, whether you are communicating to your team that you are so close to those 2023 goals and you just got to push it out a little bit more, or quite frankly, whether you're communicating with yourself and how you want to present to your boss, to your team, to the rest of your organization in 2024 in a way that feels really powerful and authentic and feels like you can bring your whole self to work. I know, always a controversial topic, but we are in the modern workplace, so our whole self is coming, whether we like it or not sometimes. So really talking about how we're bringing that whole self to work. And so when I stumbled upon this course in the LinkedIn Learning Library, I'm always kind of doing extended learning, whether it's podcast or whether it's articles or newsletters or courses. I thought to myself, this is exactly the topic that we need to get into. And that LinkedIn learning course was called Communication for the Modern World. And that was hosted by none other than Jean Marie Di Giovanni. And so I'm really excited for her to come impart her wisdom with us today over, over some caffeine. So welcome. Thank you, Kim. It's wonderful to be here. Oh, I'm so excited. I've, I've been really looking forward to this because I feel like it's one of those topics that no matter how good you think you are, there's always room for improvement. Absolutely. <laughs> I, I'm, so I'm so curious because I feel like you've, you know, had such a breadth of experience in your work. What makes you stay in communications? Because it's a sticky subject. <laughs> yeah, actually, that's that's one of the reasons I love it is there's never a shortage of new ways to do things um, and ways to master our communication, no matter how many years of experience we've been leading, managing, communicating. Um, there's always more to master and to learn. So that's what just keeps me going. And like you said in the intro, communication is so foundational to how we operate in general. So. Oh my gosh. And I also feel like maybe it's just because we get to the end of the year and we're stressed and the kids are out of school and the dog's puking and you want like, <laughs> I also just feel like communication tends to like break down in November, December. I don't know if it's the holidays and our families like bring out the worst in us. And then we go into work and we're already pissed. But like, I just feel like like November, December seems like the key time where communication can just go. Yes. Um, and also anything, anything that stresses us out, any anxiety that comes in or overwhelmed, um, it's not uncommon, right, that everything we knew goes out the door um, because our, our, you know, fight, flight kind of uh, response comes in. So this is why actually when I talk about communication, it's really about EQ. It's about 
our self-awareness. And the more we can increase our own self-awareness, the better we can actually communicate with others. Well, and I love that you bring up, you know, self-awareness and really being aware. Because one of the things that I love that you talk about is really how to uncover what's not being said. Because <laughs> a lot of times people will say, I'm listening. I mean, off topic, my husband does this all the time. He'll be like, <laughs> I like, you know, when you do the like, that's fine. You can go out with your friends. That's fine. You're, you're not listening. You're not mm -hmm. picking up that it's actually not fine. <laughs> Yeah, I am actually very mad at you. Um, we're working on that. That's another story. But I'm curious, how are you giving people tips on how to really listen to maybe what's not being said? Yeah, uh, great question. So the one of the things I talk about in the course is three levels of listening. And the first level is actually when we listen to the voices in our own head. And some of you might be thinking, well, what voice is she talking about? It's the one that just asked that. <laughs> we all have it. I'd love to say, you know, it goes away at a certain age. Um, so in order to listen for what's not being said, we have to first stop listening to the voice in our head and put that aside for a moment. And so even just in one conversation, in order to be fully present, we literally have to just take everything in our head and put it to side. Doesn't mean it goes away so that we're fully present. And until we can be present, we actually can't tap into those unspoken, the things you feel like, God, there's something, I feel like something else is going on. There's the body language, there's the tone. And so we can't notice those things if we're listening to the voices in our head. No, we can't hear them. And we also cannot, um, we can't then think on them because you're, no. you're too wrapped up in your own thoughts. <laughs> right, right. And that's why presence, you know, as much as we hear how important presence is and all that, it's not easy. It takes rigor. And I mean, it's a con it, no matter how great you could be at being present, it still takes rigor in every single conversation. <laughs> so. Now, what it, what do you, what's a good tip if you are in a meeting or you're on in a one on one with someone and you have like a spidey sense that they're not listening or you have a spidey sense that maybe the voice in their head is already kind of answering the question when you're not even done asking it what's a good way to kind of bring those people back back yeah so first off, um, I always encourage asking more questions. And so, and I'm a little obsessed about questions. So <laughs> that's always a great, actually, it's a great solution to just about anything is to get curious and ask more questions. So for example, um, if I were in that situation in a meeting and I was sensing that, I might stop what I'm saying and say, what are your thoughts about this? I feel like there's something going on there or you know you can point to something you're seeing and and without putting the other on the defense at all and then it validates they can either validate it or not and they can say oh no i'm on board with what you're saying or they actually share it um but the best thing to do is to to ask what are your thoughts what, how what are you seeing in this conversation as we've been as i've been sharing this and do you have any sort of, I don't know if it's a test or a challenge, maybe somebody that you've worked with that you're like, okay, you should be asking, you know, one question a day or in every meeting, you should be asking <laughs> one follow-up question. Like, is there kind of a rule of thumb that the individuals and companies that you work with, you kind of have as a, as a, bar as a barometer? There is one thing I will definitely share that, um, I share in a lot of my talks. It's very practical. It's not always easy, um, but it can shift conversations immediately. And that is when you start noticing yourself asking yourself why questions or the other, you could be thinking it too. Like, I can't, why are they asking me this? Or why did they do this? Right? We, we, we have these why questions that put the other on the defense or that, um, that make ourselves wrong. Like, why did I do this? I can't believe I actually sent that and I, sh I should have reviewed it first, right? So the biggest tip I can have people um, try out is instead of a why question, 
shift that to a what or a how question. And as soon as you do that, or as soon as you challenge yourself to do that, it actually challenges yourself to get more curious. So instead of why did I do that? I could say, what would I do? What could I have done differently? Or instead of why aren't they getting back to me? You could say, I wonder what's going on for them. What's happening in their world such that I'm not hearing from them? What could I, you know, what, what can I care? Ca how can I demonstrate more caring instead of assuming something's wrong? So it's just shifting that judgment to curiosity. I know I say just, it's not easy. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I, I love this topic because I, I know for me, I'm, I'm working my way out of people pleasing. I am working my way out of, I, I tend to avoid uncomfortable conversations. Like I just don't like them. Um, and so I'm, I'm, I'm working through becoming better at that. And so I think that the questions are good, but maybe for someone like me, I think what I would love to hear you touch on as well, which I know you touched on in the course is really how silence can be mm. powerful. Because I, I think for myself, what I tend to do is when I'm asking somebody for something difficult, or I'm presenting a problem, I just get like diarrhea in the mouth. I'm just like, blah, 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 like, yeah. and then I'm so sorry. And then, or if you don't like it, we other thing or if you don't like that we can do five other things and sometimes it's just like yeah so can you yeah. talk a little bit more about that sure um yeah you are not alone in that um and actually there's a connection between that like always asking things when we're nervous it's often also because our inner voice is just going crazy right our inner voice is concerned. It's wondering what they're thinking and all that. So the first thing that I, um, that I recommend is uh, to imagine that silence is actually attractive and that mm -hmm. silence gives the other an opportunity to think. It also gives you the opportunity to think. But if there's no silence in the conversation, it's just like music, right? The music happens between the notes. It's like, the listening happens between the words. And if there's no room for that, then we are not actually having a conversation. So sometimes it is forcing ourselves to stop and instead just breathe. Focus yeah. yourself on breathing and just go there and allow that. Because you might be really surprised at what opens up and what happens as a result. So just kind of taking that pause, making sure that we're really being conscious of the pause. Yes. And also sometimes when we pause, uh, the other might not respond right away. And then we can, then it's even worse. In those situations, I know it's crazy to say this because it's going to sound counterintuitive, but pause even more. And I'll tell you, I do this when I used to do, uh, when I did longer training programs, right? And this is also mo mostly in person. You know, I'd, I'd throw out a question to the group and I would hear nothing. Now, sometimes after a while, I would say something funny, you know, or, you know, just <laughs> call it out or, or whatever. But often if you wait long enough, the other person, someone will pipe up, someone will answer, the other person will respond. And then if they don't, you can say, what's the silence about? Just getting more curious. Yeah. Getting yeah. more curious. I love what Jim says. You know, sometimes it's what you didn't say or what you're leaving space for that <laughs> yes. really is the is that. the genius part. You know, when when you do take that pause, you know, one situation that I can always think of, again, I think this especially happens around the holidays, which why I was I was really excited to have you come on is it gets to be the end of the year. Your boss is asking you for like year end numbers. Now there's a bake sale at your kid's school for the end of the year. Now your in-laws want to come over, you know, five times before the holiday. And, and you just sort of realize that you're, you are totally, totally, totally like overwhelmed mm -hmm. and, and the pile on has started and you pause enough to like have the thought of like, this is too much. 
Yeah. But how do you either push back? I'm curious, how do you push back from like a work level, mm -hmm. but then also have, you know, I know you talk about bringing your whole self to work. And some of that is also pushed back on a personal level, whether that's yeah. kids, spouse, in-laws, whoever, yeah. what does yeah. that look like? Yeah, it's, it's, it's for, it's real. And, um, I'm glad you brought it up during the holidays because um, it's something we all struggle with. I would first off when, I mean, the beautiful thing is to take the pause, right? And to recognize, okay, this isn't working. I am in overwhelm. And so the first step is acknowledging that once we acknowledge it, because often we can deny it or we can reject it and that's even worse. So we recognize it. The first thing I highly recommend is, and this is going to be the best use of your time, even if it takes 10 minutes, five minutes, two minutes, <laughs> to stop and say, what are all the things I'm doing right now? Just list it all out because a lot of times, see, overwhelm actually doesn't exist in the present. It's weird to say it, but it does not exist in the present. Overwhelm exists because we're either thinking about the future or we're dwelling in the past. And so if we can stop in that moment and write it, take everything out of our head and write it all down and literally say, what are all the things I'm doing? And then to take a look at that and be really regimented to say, do I, am I the one who needs to do this right now? Can it hold, can I push it off? Can someone else do it? And then for the things that you absolutely don't have to do, or you don't have to do now, the way you communicate it is you go back to that person. It's okay too to, to, to back out of a commitment. You know, we get so, I mean, I know I have such a strong value of integrity that sometimes my value of integrity actually overrides my value of being true to myself. And that never works in the end. So you can go back by communicating and saying, you know what, I know I, I committed to this and I promise this to you. And the reality is I can't get, I won't be able to get to it by this date. Could I do this instead? Can we switch the date? How can we, I really want to make this happen. So you're, you're genuine. You state what you want. You state how, how much you, uh, you know, you, you, it's not a lie. It's basically just sharing what's so, right? And here, how can we actually make this happen? Um, so a lot of times we have to start saying no after we said yes. And then by saying no, what are we actually saying yes to? And there's always a corresponding. By saying yes, what are we saying no to? So um, yeah, it's a balancing act that is completely doable. It just takes that time out to to reflect. And I love this idea of, you know, really setting those boundaries, you know, what you can commit to, whether it's with your coworkers or maybe you, you know, to your boss. But I also love this point that Giacomo brings up that for some people who are joining us today, they themselves might be the boss or they themselves might be the leaders. So when, when you're sort of going down the chain, I guess, instead of up the chain, what are some good communication tips or tactics to keep in mind now that we are getting to the end of the year, probably being conscious that your employees might be a little frazzled or overwhelmed? As a, as a boss or a leader, um, I think it's important to create a safe space that gives people permission to say what's going on or what's not going on. Like what, what the environment is everything. And so as we go into the holidays, that's even more important to, and when I say safe, I mean, psychologically safe where as a, as, as a leader, you can literally say, Hey, just acknowledge, Hey, we're going into the holidays. There's a lot that's going on with there's a lot we have to complete before the end of the year. And there's going to be times I'm going to ask you to, to really step it up even more. And then all the other stuff that's coming along with that, I need to, to um, have you be comfortable with letting me know if something isn't working, if something isn't working, please let me know sooner than later. And then let's discuss it. So you're communicating in a way that gives permission for people to speak up when something's off and doesn't feel like they get reprimanded 
if they can't do something or they can't commit or they can't reach a deadline, that's so it's it's a tricky balance of creating that safe environment while also getting all the work done. Um, I say when people I work with uh, that or that work for me, I always say the only surprises I like are vacations, <laughs> gifts, and you know maybe a, a birthday party. But that's about it. Like I don't. <laughs> I'd rather know when something's up even if you don't have a solution. So um, obviously it's up to the person then to really believe that and, and follow it, but you can, as a leader, create that space. Well, and I feel like creating that space is really important, not only for you, but for others as well. And we had somebody email in a question. I think it fits in so beautifully here. They were, they were essentially asking about a scenario that what happens when in a meeting you see a miscommunication or a conflict breakout, not necessarily with you, mm -hmm. but with other people. And this person said, um, I had a party at work. And when we were debriefing on how the party went, there was some conflict between two people and I didn't know what to do and I didn't know how to step in. So I did nothing in that situation where it might not be you that's having the miscommunication, but you're mm. sort of, I don't know, it reminds me of like witnessing a car accident and you're like, no, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. is right. there a way to intercept or do you just kind of, I don't know, back away slowly? Yeah, it depends. There's a, a few things. I would have a few questions. One is, I, wa I, I wasn't clear if they're actually facilitating a conversation with a group of people, and then there's sort of a side discussion where there's conflict, or if it's openly conflict. But let's just say it's the two people are openly conflicting um, with whatever they're talking about. And as a facilitator, that's when, you know, again, the, the fastest thing and the best thing to do in that moment is just to point out what you see, what you notice. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's, there's definitely disagreement here about, ba -ba -da -ba -da, like about whatever they're right. talking about. Uh, <clears throat> and then you have to, as the facilitator of the discussion, know enough about the topic to recognize, okay, do I is this something important enough to bring to the rest of the group or is it out of the scope of this conversation? We should just set an action item, right? There's, it just depends. If however, there was conflict and it didn't really impact the group, then in those cases, I typically would follow up afterwards more in a one-on-one -on -one to say, <clears throat> hey, you know, I notice again, I like this. I call it play dumb technique. I hope people aren't offended when I use that word, but you kind of just go in like, Hey, I, I noticed, I see, I noticed there was a discussion with you and so-and-so and, -so, and it, it definitely seemed like it was heated. What, can you, you know, <clears throat> and then you're just getting curious. Like if we just, if those are the two techniques we did more of is just notice something without judgment notice the facts, what you see, and then ask more questions. Then we start opening up the dialogue. I love this idea of playing dumb. <laughs> I feel like that's I'm not sure weird. how, you, how you're supposed to do this, but... <laughs> and it's Listen. not being disingenuous too. Like it's not being not genuine. I, I don't want to, yeah. you know, it, it's very much from a like, hey, I just want to understand what's going on. A thousand percent. And when it comes to kind of changing the way you're approaching things that were, whether you're approaching it from a, like, help me understand, or, you know, can you explain this to me? I know something that you talk a lot about and you post these um, really brilliant Tuesday tips. If, if anybody has not checked them out, I highly encourage you to do so because you talk about simple word changes and phrase changes. What are some, I mean, obviously your, your career has spanned, you know, 25 years of owning your own business. So congratulations on that. You. But you know, what are some of the really common ones that you're like, Oh, I see this one all the time and it drives me crazy. <laughs> okay. I'll share a few. Um, so one I recently shared was, um, people who start, so sometimes we start our sentences with look or mm. uh, listen, 
what we need to do is da 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 or look, I've asked this a lot of times to the group and I'm still not getting, you know, and the thing is, I get we say these words look or listen or and it can actually really come across as a very much a turnoff and and because it can sound condescending or it can sound like, well, you know, almost like you're being reprimanded by a parent or something. Now, often people who use these words don't recognize that. It's just a, and often they've been communicated that way to them. So there's no, no judgment here. It's just that it's important to notice the impact of our words and how it impacts. And I just say, skip those words, just say what you want to say. Same with apologizing up front or you know, I'm not sure if we should do it this way, but it's like, we'll skip all that because it actually takes the power away from your own ideas. Um, and then the other is, you know, the whole to be honest or actually, or like all these are fillers that we don't recognize. And I mean, I myself do them different times too. I'm not, you know, none of us are perfect. Um, but it's just start to notice how we start our sentences and how we're getting attention. I, I, and I also feel like it can put you in a, instead of putting you in a powerful position, it puts you in a power less decision. If you're always kind of like, oh, what do you think? And, oh, mm -hmm. I think I maybe had an idea. It's just, yeah. to your point, delete all that. It's just, I had an idea. Yeah. yeah. And, and whatever it is. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Just making it those, those quick little powerful, powerful changes, I think are, are huge. Are there some that you think, you know, for anybody who's listening, who's like, I love everything that Jean Marie is saying, but like, you know, where's like a good place to start or where's kind of like mm -hmm. the shallow end of the pool? How can mm -hmm. people kind of start to do this in small ways in their everyday life? Hmm. Well, um, a small way to start is to actually pause more. It's a simple um, practice and yeah. it's not easy. I say simple doesn't mean it's not easy. It's, it's not easy, especially for those who are like more on the high D, high, you know, on this, this scale. And, um, and also for fast thinkers, right? Because we, we, we ask things quickly. We want answers quickly. And this again brings, creates more inclusion and more belonging in the workplace. So I would start by just pausing more. And secondly is um, as soon as you notice the voice in your head to stop and the fastest way to get over, back over there with them, with the other person is to ask yourself, how can I serve? How can I serve? I love and, that. And when you say that to yourself, automatically, it's just, and this is one of the questions in my book that I share, but you automatically, your attention goes over to the other person, right? Or how can I make you successful? Or like that, that question, and just to practice those two things, like, and just go from there. I think that those reframes are really important for us to keep in mind. And I... I love Matt's point here of, I like the yes and to replace the yes, but yes, nobody a likes one. a but statement. <laughs> <laughs> no buts. Yeah. No buts. Um, I also knew we would probably get a question about this because I feel like it's such a hot topic now when it comes to communication, mm. but uh, AI, you know, chat GPT, everyone is either you know, up in arms over how AI <laughs> is going to change the way we communicate, or they're very pro AI and think it's going to help our communications. I'm curious, you know, for you, what, how are you reacting to mm. AI when it comes to communication? Yeah, this is a great topic. I first will say that when I first started using chat GPT, I actually... I started noticing something really interesting about myself because I love, there's never a shortage of ideas that I have. I mean, if we, if you shared something with me, I would, I could come up with, it's just a natural way that I think, like I can come up with things to ask, think, think about all that and making new connections. And so when I started 
look, exploring the power of chat GPT, I was like, oh my God, this is amazing. And I, it helped me kind of come up with like base outlines for a book and like things like that. And then I started noticing something really fascinating. The more I started using it and dug deeper, the less I started thinking for myself. And then I started realizing my own creativity was going downhill. Now this didn't take long, but it was actually a bit, it almost was a little bit scary for me because I had to start recognizing when does it serve me and help me? And when does it actually take more of my power away? And so if we use that analogy with communication and, and AI, it's, I think it's a fabulous tool. Like the more that we can have more ways to say things in mm -hmm. an appropriate, in a, in a better way that we could, perfect. Like I have, I am all for typing in, you know, can you, I love like some of the things I, I often do will say, can you uh, write this with more empathy? Right mm -hmm. now, especially for yeah. high D's, I'm a high D, I'm also a high I. So you know, I have to make more of an effort to really connect and bring that compassion and feel that within myself. So those are great. Highly recommend though, when we use an AI tool, because I'll tell you when I first, when it first came out a lot more and people were using it on LinkedIn, you could tell right away who was using it on LinkedIn and responding to my posts because they'd always have like 10 other points and then it would end with in summary or, you know, it would use words that we don't use when we communicate. We so You're just, like, no. I, just, I just asked that like, if we're going to use it for communication, great. Use it to formulate the ideas, to communicate, and then validate it with your own voice, with your own words that feel comfortable for you. Um, so that's my take on AI. I feel like that's, that's a big one. Are there any other like tools or um, things that you, I mean, I know you just mentioned chat GPT, you know, something that I really love using is Notion, but are there any other like platforms or apps that you use all the time that you're like, this has been really great and helpful for me? Um, that is a good question. I am, I am not as tech savvy as <laughs> even though, believe it or not, I studied computer science in college, but I am just not, uh, I'm probably more of a late adopter to things. Um, and, uh, yeah, so I don't, I don't use any other actual, I would say apps for communication. Um, yeah, but it does remind me, I'm, I'm looking to create an app <laughs> for communication, I should say, um, that takes a lot of the questions that I use and teach people and put it in an app so that you can literally put in like, you can say, oh, I'm going into a performance review. What are some questions I can ask right away? Um, and so that's the kind of tool that I want to provide people. But yeah, I don't, I, I, I don't, unfortunately have some really good answers on that one. I'm curious, you know, I feel like you were talking about LinkedIn and people commenting on your LinkedIn and scrolling on LinkedIn. Are there any, you know, whether it's humans or accounts that you follow on LinkedIn that you just feel like, wow, these are really helpful and I get a lot of like fast tips from them? Oh, absolutely. Um, so a few, I would say I, I love following um, David McLean because um, he's just, he's such an amazing curator of knowledge. Um, the other two that are very much like that are David Marlowe. Um, what I love about his, his posts is he also adds his stories and his experience. And the other I would say is Roberto Ferraro. You may recognize him with some of his sketch notes that are very simple. Um, he has, a, and I was gonna recommend his newsletter too, is he has just, again, an amazing curator. I, sometimes I wonder how people have so much like how they're able to read so much and consume so much and be able Definitely. to summarize. Cause I'm like, Oh my God, I could barely you know, get everything I need to get done. So he is someone I highly recommend um, checking out too. Um, and just really wealth of, of information that he gathers from all different resources. 
I, I love that because I also feel like, you know, so much of LinkedIn is it's such a resource for even myself, like beyond posting, I feel like I gain so much oh. from whether it's the LinkedIn learning library or just scrolling through my feed. It's such a source of knowledge for me. Yeah. Yeah. It's great. <laughs> it's, it's awesome. Well, I know that we've talked before about our group, the, around these parts, we tend to be very nerdy. We tend to really enjoy homework assignments and, <laughs> you know, doing things that are going to help us get better in the workplace or at home. So I'm curious if you could give all of us a homework assignment for the rest of this week and going into this weekend. It could be to read something or download something or take a quiz or um, subscribe. I'd love to know what homework sure. assignment you would give us. Yeah, that's a great question. Um, I'm going to give one that I give to all my um, all the people I work with in in the work that I do, which is instead of judging another based on what they said, based on your past experience with them in conversations, to practice getting curious, just to come from a place of wonder, like I wonder what they're going through. I wonder what's important to them. I wonder what they need. I wonder how I can support them. And if we can simply do that, practice that more, move from judgment to curiosity, our conversations will shift, our dialogues will shift, our relationships will shift. So that's the homework. Um, you can do it in every conversation, even just try it once in a conversation. I would also encourage everybody that if you can do, you can fill yourself with wonder in your personal life too. It doesn't have to just be at no. work. It's a brilliant opportunity to do that in all, all facets of your life. Yeah. I always say, uh, if you can, I think of judgment and curiosity on a spectrum and, and you can either judge or be curious. You can't be in two places at once. So if you have a choice, why not choose curiosity? I love that. And it opens you up to more people, quite frankly, than you do from a place of judgment. No Absolutely. one's really going to be uh, confiding in you if they think you're judging. Yeah, yeah, very true. <laughs> I love this. Well, if people are eager to keep getting some Tuesday tips or keep learning from you, where should they go? What are the best <clears throat> things that they should download or watch to keep learning from you? Oh, sure. So yes, absolutely. I'd love to connect with you on LinkedIn or to have you follow um, my work there. I post about three times a week and definitely a Tuesday tip uh, for sure that you mentioned, Kim. Um, the other is to check out if you want some quick, like immediate questions to apply right away on the job, you can go to my site at jmariespeaks.com and download the 10 questions to unlock new ideas and new, and new talent, a hidden talent on your team. Again, that we think we, we know everybody, but we actually don't. Um, and then the last is my LinkedIn learning course is now unlocked for the rest of the year. So, um, and the great thing, the beautiful thing is it's now available to everyone. It was uh, one of the top four most watched courses by tech professionals this year. So as a result, they unlocked it. Um, so I just love that I'm able to kind of gift that to everybody. So absolutely encourage people to check that out. We will drop that link in the chat, but that is huge because it means that it is for free, everybody. That's what unlocked means. It's a very nice way of saying for free, which is what we like. Free 99 is my favorite price to pay. So <laughs> there is no excuse not to watch Jean Marie's course because it's completely free over on LinkedIn Learning. So there's, there's a good homework assignment from me to you guys for the rest of the weekend. Awesome. Uh, well, thank you so much for taking the time today. This was really helpful. And and thank you for, for joining Jean Marie and I. We had so much fun. Your questions were amazing. And thanks for taking the time. We are off next week, but we will be back the week after that, 1 p.m. Eastern on Wednesdays. It was so good seeing you, Jean Marie. Thank you so much. Likewise. It's been a pleasure. Thank you, Kim. Awesome. Thank you all. Bye, everybody. Bye.